Hello, League City. Happy Wednesday. It's Wednesday, so you know what time it is. It's time for our Lunch and Learn. Great topic today and a uh, uh, great director because Chris Sims, <laughs> I'm being serious, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Chris Sims is the director of engineering. And when you think about engineering, I feel like, Chris, you're the director of everything when you talk about drainage and mobility projects and and we, we definitely have our hands in everything. you that's do sure. you know that's a good way to say yeah. it you the engineering department does have it have its hands in everything yeah. so we're going to be talking about quite a few things today if you uh, drainage of course um uh, new fema maps mm -hmm. Um, some some work we're doing to get grants from FEMA and other places. So if you have any questions, please just put it in the comment section, um, and we'll try to answer it. If not, you know we always will will, will um, direct message you the answer you know after the fact. So let's start today. New FEMA maps. Sure. Um, are expected to be approved August fifteenth. No, right they, they, they were approved. They by were city approved. Council. Okay. So what that means for the city is the maps are in place now for new development that's moving forward. What it means for our citizens and residents are beginning August the 15th, you could see adjustments in your insurance rate depending on how often the insurance provider researches that type of stuff. So if you are a homeowner, whether mm -hmm. you're in a floodplain, not a floodplain, mm -hmm. you, you really need to go check the map out. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. For League City, we um, went off of the 1999 map. So let, let me back up just a little bit. Um, this is the first update to these FEMA maps in 30 years. 30 years. Yeah, so we, we have been looking at maps for drainage standards dating back to 1999. Um, we knew these changes were coming about 12 or 13. They started releasing some preliminary stuff. So we worked with the development community during that time to implement as much as reasonably possible uh, to try to get homes that were built since roughly 2014 to mm -hmm. now to meet those standards in advance. Um, and we've been pretty successful. There's a few little outlier things as maps were adjusted mm -hmm. during that time that, that maybe fell through. But for the most part, we've been very successful in getting that done. Um, but based off the 1999 map, right at 24.5% of the city fell into the 100-year floodplain, meaning that if you had a mortgage, you were required mm -hmm. to have flood insurance. Um, strongly recommended any you, other time. No matter but, but what, yeah. It was a requirement if you were... Uh, uh, had a mortgage. So these new maps um, put 50.2% of oh, the city. Oh, wow. So, so, so that's so a, a pretty big change. increase. Yes. So, and, and one of the things is we included, when I'm giving you those percentages, we included the 500 year as well in those numbers. So the 500 year, as, as we all saw in Hurricane Harvey, I mean, during that 500 year, you're susceptible to flooding yeah. as well. So we wanted to, to show that is our special flood hazard areas. Uh, even though FEMA only recommend recognizes the 100 year, we recognize the, the 500. So we do have those uh, maps and the link and, and, and all of that on our website. So if you go to leaguecity.com and kind of scroll through the highlight section, mm -hmm. you'll see FEMA real big and you'll know to click right. on that. And we also have um, the individual flood studies and, and partial maps on the engineering webpage. Uh, we have a floodplain link off of there. You go there and it'll it'll list them all out. So so go check it out. And if you think you've changed, you're not sure, you probably should just call absolutely. your insurance agent, a right? Absolutely. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can always call us, email us. We'll we'll help on that. There is a website right now called riskmap6.com that will help you. Um, and we have that link. Yeah, that's right. That, that link is on our website. If you're curious, you can go there. I don't know if. We found a few irregularities yeah. there, so I don't know if I would take that as the gospel on, on what it is. And it's a little tricky looking sometimes. It, you're like, it, is my house here be. or not here? Absolutely. So if you have any questions, certainly Absolutely. call. So if you're in that band where it looks funky, give yeah. us a call. Give, and, we'll, and you guys we'll will walk you, you through Absolutely. it, and I know you've done Absolutely. that um, as well. And, of course, your insurance agent as mm -hmm. well. And, and while we're here, let's talk about, even if you're not mm -hmm. in there, why you need flood insurance. Oh, yeah. So, you know, with Harvey, we, we had. 500 year floodplain homes that were in the 500 year floodplain um, we had sections of the city that had you know three four five foot of water yeah. so you definitely want it um, we recommend it I mean we live so close to the ocean yeah. it doesn't matter if you're in a hundred year floodplain a 500 year floodplain or not you're, in a floodplain at all flood frankly plain. yeah you're in yeah. a floodplain you're so close it's just uh, uh, what intensity storm are we talking about before it gets you so we would recommend 
everybody get it. Yeah. Obviously, if you're in the 500 or, or outside the 500, you, it's a choice you have to make. And it, and it's economical. It's really Absolutely. it's really not. Well, you know, we're talking hundreds of dollars mm-hmm. a year. Not you know, if you're not in in the right. zone. And when you weigh that out compared to what folks that had to rebuild their home after three oh, feet absolutely. of water, um, you know, <laughs> there's a return on your invest that, investment investment there. That's correct. Let's shift gears a little bit and, and speak a little bit about kind of Harvey in, in general mm-hmm. and and the aftermath and and two years later coming up on the anniversary here, yeah. hard to believe, but but there are some grants and what and whatnot that we're kind of in the in the stages for now applying for and we have projects. Talk a little bit yeah. about those C, and it's CD. BG grants. I'm going to get it that's wrong. Correct. I always do, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so you're correct. I, okay, I good. Mis- I mispronounce it about half the time as well. Um, this is through the General Land Office and our uh, Harris, Galveston County uh, Council. Um, they allocated up to $13.5 million worth of funds to the city. That broke out to be about uh, $6.8 million in infrastructure costs, $6.9 million in land acquisition mm-hmm. costs. Um, it's very specific on what we can use those funds for, where in the mm-hmm. city we can use those uh, funds at, and it's kind of a use it or lose it type deal. So we're working through that process. They've posted their applications online. Uh, I believe it was it was right around Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've been working on those applications. The deadline to get everything turned in is August the 31st. We have, uh, have to have a 30-day public viewing time. So we have our draft um, applications posted as well they're on our website you can find them we've noted them in the last couple of city ma- um, uh, city manager updates right. that went out so you can go and take a look at them and it's typically just to use one example we have a project in uh, the landing subdivision mm-hmm. so there's an application for the uh, land acquisition and then there's an application for the infrastructure work so you can take a look at those if you have any questions ask us uh, or uh, actually we have an email set up you'd email the response um, the public viewing ends August the 19th, but we would do is gather any and all public comments that we had, issue out a, a addressing comments as best we can at that point in time, and looking to have all those applications submitted by the 31st. So what kind of other projects are we talking about? So residents can go to our website and kind right. of see what basically you're applying so grants for, mainly drainage? It, or it is primarily all drainage, drainage. Right, okay. right on that. Uh, through the CDBG CDR Community Sunday. Development Block uh, grant. Grants. Okay. Disaster recovery. <laughs> Disaster recovery. Yeah. <laughs> portion. Um, so it's a mouthful. Uh, we have a project with the landing on there right now. Uh, folks of Clear Creek and some detention ponds for them. Uh, Britain Bay, Newport, uh, and Ellis Landing subdivision. Uh, the Britain Bay Landing, Newport Ellis Landing, they're all right there together. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of, um, those are some of our older neighborhoods. They actually did pretty good in Harvey. I mean, mm-hmm. I, anybody that flooded, I understand, Sam, you did pretty good. It's not, it's not something you want to hear, you wanna hear but, but yeah. But, you know, they did pretty good. What, what we're wanting to do on those is take some other flow swells. So as the water starts coming up in the street, it's got somewhere to go other than in your homes. So those jobs all are very, very similar. You're all grouped together. Um, and we think those will be a very successful job. They'll you know, take water out to landing ditch quicker. And, and the, so these quicker. are really all applications. So we're in they, the they application they phase of it right Correct. now. So we want our residents to kind of see what we're applying yeah, for. So their, their review period starts in September. The GLA's uh, review period starts in September. You know, I would tell you it's probably after the first of the year before mm-hmm. we know if we get funding or not. It could be quicker. It could be six eight months right you know so it's it once you hit that september one start date they're on the clock and as fast as they can get applications reviewed and turned out well we have a question mm-hmm. so gary wants to know is keeping drains clear a problem for the city if so what can we do as citizens to help oh that's a good question uh that's a question i, I bet jody hooks our, i was our just public, gonna say our public works answer, director uh, jody hooks lot, would, lot would totally be right here you i know one of the things i would say it always seems like we have Huge rain events coming on on trash day. <laughs> yeah. So, so be sure uh, that you know you, you kind of secure your trash the best you can. Make sure you don't see uh, if you see paint can lids or parts or whatever that could potentially get into our storm drain. Those little things over time accumulate and it will just basically cause a damage. Yeah, and we system. don't we don't want to say don't take out yeah, your trash, absolutely. but if we're 
and you know we know when they're coming we 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 usually have some advance warning and and luckily all residents have two days a week and so maybe if you can because what ends up happening is that trash bag gets swept by the wind and it and it just takes one trash bag in that drain and and your whole street you know is flooded and i know another thing jody says too that's it's concerning that you can do leaves do not blow your your yard trash your yard debris the leaves all mm-hmm. the clippings after you cut your lawn mm-hmm. into the drains i've seen people doing this right. i've seen landscapers doing this bag them because what ends up happening everybody does that and mm-hmm. yeah it ends up in the in your drain and it, it creates that that dam effect um, another thing that we do to help prevent this is if you'll notice um, when we have a large project going on like our animal shelter for mm-hmm. instance if you start looking on walker Uh, as they were doing a lot of the earthwork initially, we had uh, some screens over our inlets. Mm. So when those trucks are are leaving the job site and you get the mud on the street, it's hard to immediately get that clean. So those screens kind of prevent it as as you have a rain that comes down, it catches there. Oh, okay. And it's easier doesn't, to clean all that mud it. doesn't That's go right. in. That That's makes right. sense. That makes complete sense. So yes, obviously, any help you can give us with keeping our drains mm-hmm. clean, we very we very much appreciate it. I would say we have one of the most proactive public works departments oh, before absolutely. a rain event. Just know that if we know we've had a couple of these in the last month or month or so that. They are out that week, that couple of days, going around to, to any kind of known problem area, clean, so just checking those drains. Jody's guys are great. You know, um, if we have people call uh, us asking about, hey, we've got a slow drain or something like that, we work with them oh, directly. Oh, absolutely. Um, they jump out, and they do a very good job. They will, uh, they've got a bunch of different tests they'll do, but they do have a video camera that they can run in and Oh, you can totally a, see. Yeah. I've, we've done some some videos on the video camera, yeah. and it's pretty amazing that they can go in and yeah. find what's blocking it. Or and, and then what happens is something similar um, just recently in the Westwood subdivision. Well, not recently. In, in Harvey, they had a, a few homes that, that flooded, and we thought initially there's got to be some type of, of clog there mm-hmm. that's related to that. So we went in and we looked at that. Uh, Jody's guys went and videoed that for us. We also went and looked at the detention pond to see if something had, had maybe formed mm. up over time just in front of the inlet um, and didn't find anything. So it helped us say, well, we know we don't have a, a clog problem. Let's go back and really get in the weeds on that design. Yeah, that way you can cross and, that and go, it's and not absolutely. that, it's not this. So as a result, we, we found where that issue was, and, and it was a project that was presented by site and our CIP program to, to correct. So it's a... Process that we have to go through to get that. Done. So, so reach out to us. Uh, to, you could call three one one. You uh, and call Public Works because mm-hmm. they legitimately will go out oh, if you absolutely. think a drain is clogging. Uh, we've had folks, you know, I've had folks on Facebook, uh, t- you know, send, p- post a picture and then I send it right over to Jody and, and yeah, the team gets out. Absolutely. So we're very, very, very proactive. Yeah. Speaking of proactive, you have been very active applying for FEMA grants yeah, yeah. <laughs> over the past, like yeah. forever. So uh, waiting for news still on some of those, because that kind of played in with our, with our bond program that recently yeah. got approved. Can you give us a little status update on some of those? Absolutely. So we, we applied, we, we took 26 projects initially, uh, applied to FEMA and said, hey, we think these are viable projects. They did an initial th- uh, read through and said, you know what, we agree, they are viable. So we started working on applications for those. Once you start looking at all the criteria you have to meet, of those 26, 19 actually met all the, the nooks and cranny requirements yeah. that were there. So we submitted those 19. Um, at the end of last year, we heard back on one, which was a master drainage plan, that it was going to be funded. We actually got the uh, notice that it was officially funded in May. Great. And that project is out right now to the RFP so we can do a, a designer on, on the topic Great. and move forward. Uh, the others have really, the other 18 have really kind of drug along. Uh, we heard earlier that, that nine uh, did not, uh, I say earlier on, a, a week or so back, that uh, nine were not going to be funded, that, that didn't quite meet uh, uh, the thresholds that they set forward and, and I guess the money that was being allocated. And then we heard that our other nine that we were waiting to hear on were going to be no, uh, put on the alternate list, mm. which means that as you start doing your engineering studies on other projects, maybe projects that they thought would be successful 
don't really pan out. And if that happens, then FEMA cuts that funding and you start looking at oh, what's and, on the Oh, and then you see what, so if that's not yeah. necessarily going to work for it, that exactly. project in this city or exactly. wherever, it might work, so, yeah. So that's that's good news in, in one sense yeah. that, that potentially there's nine that could get funded. It's bad news that means, hey, we've got to wait now maybe a year, maybe two years to see how stuff shakes out before we know if we'll get those projects funded or not. So we, we realized that was a, a potential issue when we were looking at our, our GO bond election yeah. and everything. So every project that we um, went after a, a FEMA grant on, we also included in the bond project list. So in case that those didn't get funded or what's happening now where they're alternate funded, if we don't want to wait the five years, we, we've got that. Which we don't. We have exactly. heard from council exactly. and we're not. Exactly. And we're, we don't want to exactly. wait and we're not. So that, so that's that was a good plan on yeah. that on that part. And as we close things up, because gosh, this time went by so quickly and we'll, yeah. we'll have to bring you on back. How are things going with the bond? I mean, I know we passed in, in May. It's only yeah, it's, you know August 1st tomorrow, but there's been a lot of work already done. There has been. We've taken um, four projects in total to city council for funding. We've got one that will go on the August 13th agenda. Uh, we've and got, that's for? That is for Magnolia Creek okay. and Cedar Gully, which we just recently did a, uh, a community meeting that's on. Right, and, that's and right. And brought people up to speed on that. Um, we're also about to, I've started negotiating on one other project, and I've got meetings scheduled for four additional projects on top of that. So I would say... Uh, September is going to be very oh, busy. Well, I was going to say, so <laughs> we'll block Council. out a time that's, in September right. for you to come back so. <laughs> on and join us to talk uh, to talk right. about everything and, yeah. and update us. So, so, so we're definitely moving forward. One of the things that it may have seemed like we were a little slow on is it's waiting to hear on the on the grant funding. Yeah. You don't want to get ahead of, of the game there and end up doing something that's not allowed in the grant and you end up losing the money. Well, that's the, key, that's the key thing is like, and that's why we were waiting on some because exactly. if we got the FEMA grant, there's very specific things you have to do to make sure you have the money and you mm -hmm. hate to get started on that and then get the grant and then exactly. you, it's, yeah. So exactly. that's smart on our part and, um, and lots of things moving forward. Chris, thank you so much Absolutely. for joining me today. Yeah, Absolutely. you'll be back in September. You don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't you worry. We'll, we'll schedule a date because lots and lots of good information uh, here today. We didn't answer your question today. I know there was a couple that came in. Don't worry. We'll direct message you and get and get your answer. Um, but as always, join us on Wednesday for our Lunch and Learns. And uh, go out and have a great day, League City.